So I think it's going to be time for yet another video where Brad complains about how many tickets a character's got because Grandpa is now available in Duel Links and I don't think he's going to be a super amazing character from the leaked skills, from the leaked cards. I don't think it's going to be all that. Now, the good thing about his event, though, he did one really good thing, is that in six years, we've now got Auto Duel out of the gate, which is fantastic, right? That is insane. Hopefully, they can bring it to the standard gate. That'd be incredible. But for now, it's event gates. That's fantastic. It's a, it's a good step towards making door links way more accessible. Right, just one more good step. But let's go into Grandpa because first of all, his event wasn't overly amazing with reward cards, right? We of course had AS Rock Sunrise, a card Chumley used, and side effects, a card no one used. So this wasn't really a Grandpa themed event. And so hopefully, his cards and skills can redeem him somewhat, but let's dive right in. First of all, at level 3, we've got Majesty with Eyes of Blue. Okay, so I believe Kaiba had one or two copies of this. Right, let me just go and check real quickly. We've got 45 the Melody, we've got Majesty at 38, and that's it. So, I like this. Even if this card isn't super usable, right, getting more copies up to 3 is great. This card is fine. Can lock down a monster. Okay, that that that's cool. Then we've got a SRUR ticket at level seven. Of course, these are the bane of my existence. I'd rather they do something different, like box chips. You know, they were meant to be event rewards, and they've not started to be them yet. And so, box chips would be way better than these crappy SRUR choice tickets. Just Konami, even like giving ten box chips would be way way better in these slots. Then we've got. Fiber Jar, no Fiber Jar, Fiber, fiber Jar be insane. Dice Jar. Both players roll a six sided die. The player with a lower result takes damage equal to their opponent's roll times 250. However, if the winner rolled a six, the loser takes 3k. If they're the same, roll again. So, this is a very fun Mimi card, right? It's not going to see play. It's not overly good. It's just a four fun classic DM era card from Front Guardian, I think it was, way back in the day. Cool. You know, if, if, if Grandpa's going to be this boomer character, give him a bunch of boomer cards. Fine, I'm all I'm down with that. But of course, we've got a second ticket. Okay, that's two. Then at level 14, Archfiend's Awakening. So finally, we've got the Ritual Summon Skull. This is very cool. It comes from a battle, except by ritual, or by monster effects, except by ritual. So it's got some protection, but of course, Book of Moon, Floodgate, Compulsory can deal with this quite easily. If it's sent to the graveyard, special summon skull from your hand, deck or graveyard. It's just fine, you know, it's a card we've been needing in Duel Links for a while now. We've got the Xyz, we've got the Fusion. This just made sense to come now, and I guess before Rush Duel comes in, with Summon Skull actually getting some decent archetypal support in, in that format, this kind of does make sense. Then, I can see already, ticket number three. Oh boy, I think Anna had five or six tickets, so we'll see how many Grandpa does have. Then we've got a very funny card. Or deal of a traveler. When a post monster collects an attack, a post is one card in your hand and calls type of card. Monster spell trap card. If they call it wrong, you balance the barracks in the hand. This was so funny back in the day. If you set up multiple copies of this, right? Because they would have to go through one ordeal, then two ordeals, then three ordeals. And so if, if even one of them remotely missed, you would bounce that card back to the hand. It was so toxic but so funny. And I don't think we'll get more than one copy of this card. If we do, That'd be pretty cool, but I think I'm just going to kind of limit them a little bit. Then we've got a... Is that our fourth? Our fourth ticket? It's our fourth ticket. Okay, that's... Uh, okay, fourth ticket. We've then got a second copy of Melody, of Majesty, sorry. So that's three copies of Majesty so far. That's fine. Then our fifth ticket. We've then got our second copy of the Archfiend's Awakening. We've then got our sixth ticket. Our four... Oh, come on, Konami. Four Majesty? Kaiba is your starter character. Literally, you pick Kaiba or Yugi, then the Rockable at like stage 6. Why do we need four copies of Majesty on a time limited character? People aren't going to unlock, new players aren't going to unlock until way down the line. Right? This just doesn't make sense. If people are playing Duel Links, they're leveling these two characters up. They're the most important characters, most known characters in the game. So, why? They could have done something cool. Okay, or even like a prismatic version, you know, would have been would have been fine, I guess. Uh, then we've got another ticket. We've then actually I might be done with that already. 
Then we got a ticket, like a uh, yep, okay, more tickets, a second dice jar, and a third copy of the Archfiend. So one ordeal, two dice jar, three Archfiends, and what was that? It was, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tickets. Seven. That could have been two or three other cards. You know, I, I don't get it. I don't get why these are a thing. And I say it every single update, every single character that gives them, why do these exist? You know, we have so many tickets already. You know, we have the Turbo Duel events, we have the um, the mission circuit, we've got the Duel quest, we've got the Duel, we've got all these different events, right? They give you so many tickets, right? You log in, you get tickets, you play KC Cup, you get tickets. And they do better than this. They give you these and more. And it just, it just doesn't, uh, it just, just doesn't make sense. But now, we've had our Boomer character. Card-wise, I think there's some interesting cards None of them are really good. They're funny, nostalgia references. The blue eyes thing's very annoying. The tickets are very annoying. But now onto the skills. Can we redeem ourselves? I am very doubtful. First of all, we've got double normal summon, which is on Bakura as well, which is fine. Draw sense dark, low level, spell and traps with some generic stuff. Extra curse number one. If an opponent's monster near EMZ is to a battle, inflict damage to opponent's life points. This skill can only be applied when there are no cards in your extra deck and your opponent has 1,000 life points or more. Oh my god. That is completely awful. Just completely awful. Extra Curse 2. Could this one be better? On your next turn, after your opponent spells somebody monster in the EMZ, this skill can be activated while extra has less cards than your opponent's. Okay. Wait. While your extra deck has less cards than your opponent's. So, you've got to have played an extra card as well it does decrease the attack points right between a difference number of cards times 100 but that's not what i guess you went to play no extra deck and just like decrease by 600 800 right and okay okay i guess if they're playing that jaden skill that has like a ton of heroes in their deck then it's cool against that uh life charge life point boost omega we've got my treasure blue eyes white dragon and this one is a bit of a piss take because increase the attack of blue eyes, normal, by 500. This skill will only work if you have exactly one blue eyes in your deck and no extra deck. It's your treasure is gaining 500. Is a glorified beatdown. <sighs> For one single card, no, no one is playing this. Like, no one is playing this skill. No one is. Then we've got Sinister Serpent Surprise. Now, this card's been in Duel Links for a while. It's done nothing, it was errated, so it's completely garbage now. But, every time life points decrease by 1000, okay, here we go, you can use one of the following effects, each once per duel. Instead of your normal draw, place Instant Serpent to a graveyard from outside your deck. Okay, fair enough. Can be used during your main phase. Return all your banished Instant Serpents to your graveyard. Okay, so it allows you to keep recycling Instant Serpent. That's fine. The 1000 life points restriction is kind of rough, but given that you're going to be in a position where you would have summoned multiple Instant Serpents anyway, you would have taken damage already, so I don't think it's that bad, but I don't think it's a good skill uh, at all. Then we've got Ty the Bind, so cool, another character with it, That that's very nice. Yowza, a divine card. This one is uh, stupid, it just lets you copy an Egyptian god card that's on your opponent's field, and it's your hand, which... <sighs> yeah, it's, it's not good. And then we've got the Forbidden Power. You can activate one of the following effects each time life points decrease by 1000, each event can be used once per duel. First of all, play an Exodium monster from your hand to your field, which means Necros or Incarnate, or of course, the head, if you want to. Secondly, place one Exodium head from outside your deck to your graveyard. Thirdly, reveal one Exodium monster in your hand, then place a right arm right leg into your graveyard from outside your deck. And the last one, of course, is the legs. This, of course, is designed to be used with the Exodium Incarnate card, right? The, the big monster you summon out, they every turn brings cards back to your graveyard, back to your hand. That's the intention. Now, is it any good? Is it better than playing your standard grandpa's card skill with Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Probably not. Probably not. Now, I do want to check one more thing, and that's to see, did they give us a blue eyes in the deck? And they did. Okay. But of course, it is the wrong artwork. Why would it not have been a cool to give us the anime artwork? Right, the one he actually had in the anime, give us that. Rather than this. The one he didn't use. How could it be his treasure if it wasn't the one he used? I, I... This is a this is a, 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 a boomer deck, right? You've got Star Deck Yugi cards, you've got uh, LOB cards, LOB cards, MRD, Star Deck, Star Deck, Pharaoh Servant, Pharaoh Servant. 
it's a boomer deck, he's a boomer character, and it's just kind of missed the mark, I think. But then again, what do we expect? Even the box was GX themed, really. There was no DM stuff in there. And here, we've got some DM themed stuff loosely, but overall, it just seems like this is the biggest kind of misfire for a character. And I think, like, in terms of unique cards, right? Even Duke has better cards. Even Tristan, probably, has better, more playable cards. Or at least he has more cards, right? I think Tristan has, like, seven unique cards. And Grandpa has three and seven tickets. So, yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a miss. Um, of course, we've got Serena coming as an unlock in July, so hopefully she'll be a little bit better. But the big thing is we've got about 2,500 gems to unlock via Grandpa, and so that'll be very useful for potentially the selection box coming in July, or saving for the mini box in August, or, of course, the brand new world coming in September, if they use the same currency. A big if. But that is my thoughts and review of Grandpa. Let me know down below what you think of the character. I'll see you all later today or tomorrow, I think, for a pack opening for the brand new box. Apologies a bit late, but I wasn't really sure if I'm going to go into it or not. But anyway, I'll see you all then. Thanks for watching.